All right. Friday, 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 Friday. Gotta get that song. Yeah. Lou, no complaining. We're online. Good morning, everybody. There's muffins here, and you can't have them. Now, we're doing government and politics today. I'm expecting this to be the... I'm expecting this to be my my YouTube viral. That's right. It's gonna go fully viral. We're gonna have at least we're gonna go past like 20 views. All right, past 20, and that means my dad will have to watch it 15 times. All right, uh, we're gonna break the po politics unit up into uh, the political spectrum and elections. That's what we're gonna start with. And then we'll move over to the last two, making laws and parliamentary procedure. Uh, finally, the Constitution and the Charter. Uh, making laws, parliamentary procedure will probably have quite a few little terms all randomly thrown in there. Political spectrum is pretty easy. You might remember it. Political spectrum. That's the one where we have this going on, right? Okay? And we have the right and the left. Um, and we talked about the idea in the political spectrum, I'm not going to draw it, that in the middle of the spectrum we have the brain, which means thinking and talking and boring. That's democracy. And on the outsides, more than Ashley, and on the outsides, we have um, the fists, which is the, I call it the just do it parties, the Nike parties, the groups where they don't have a lot of voice, but they just get it done. On the right, we have the fascists, and yes, that's my left arm, but it looks right to you. Um, the fascists, and on the left, we have the communists. And what they have in common is they're both totally in control, totalitarian, and in the middle, we have democracy, okay? We talked about this. And then we just take a quick look at the spectrum. But remember during the provincial exam, the first two questions are almost always on this. And literally I told you, and it's not going to work this year, that when Mr. Butters give you a sentence instructions, you remember? If you look at your neighbor's paper, thou shalt be imploded. You will get the zero. Your neighbor will get the zero and his friends will all get zero. You know that? But I said he's very much like a Nazi and that what I wanted you to do is salute him. And when you saluted him, remember to use your right arms. And then you remember, ah, oh, the Nazis are on the right. And then you remember where the communists are. So. Okay, Mr. Butters won't be there, so you can salute whichever vice principal or principal's at the front. They won't understand. It's okay. Um, okay, so the spectrum works like this. Um, we have drawn out like that. On the far right, we have the fascists or the Nazis, okay? And on the far left, we have the communists. Both like I just did, are totalitarian. So total control, totalitarian governments. And we did a thing in class, propaganda, secret police, uh, censorship of the press, right? Lack of freedom, but everything getting done. In Italy with the fascists, Mussolini made their trains run on time. Okay, and he, you know, right? So he'd do anything he could to, to make things work. Uh, in the middle now, we move into democracy. But what I'm gonna do is go this way. Closer to the left, out here, we have the socialists. Now remember, uh, not everybody who's a socialist is going to be way out to the left. Some will be closer. What's the name of the socialist party in Canada? The NDP. They don't call themselves socialist party anymore. Sorry about that. They changed about a year ago, but they're the closest thing we have to socialists. Um, the NDP, of course, they used to be the CCF as well. And they were proudly socialist for a long time. All right? Uh, socialist countries in the world. Uh, Sweden, Finland, uh, these are countries that are socialist. Let's go back and forth again. Uh, let's just go back to the fascists. Maybe we can do a quick set of notes. The fascists, total control, everything for your country. Everything for your country. Life, everything. Country comes first, okay? Um, extreme nationalists, very much into the military. Remember we watched the, the little clip of the Indiana Jones um, when he was meeting Hitler, and everybody's wearing a uniform, and there was marching music, and the books were burning. And I said, Spielberg, Nazis, 20 seconds, there's your image. If we were to jump over to the communists, the, the difference would be not necessarily extreme nationalism and extremely into the military, but still total control. In this case, the idea behind communism was, we're going to make everybody equal, you're equal, damn it. Like literally, you're equal, like you're forced. The economy is totally controlled by the government. So in this case, it is total economic control and the government or the bureaucracy runs everything. And that's where a guy named George Orwell wrote Animal Farm and his point was 
was that the people running the government became corrupt. His, his argument was, uh, what was it? Uh, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. Um, anyhow, again, total control, but with the goal of creating complete economic equality. Thank you, comrade. If it's a comrade, if it's equal. Um, over here, we're all together, but we're all together to make our country, our country's the best in the world. We're just gonna build a big military. What could go wrong with that? Socialists don't believe in complete control of the economy, but they do believe the government has a big role in the economy. And they think the government should control the big industries in the economy. So if you go to Finland, uh, the gas and oil is all controlled by the government. Okay? Um, and there's some industries in Canada that are controlled by government. Uh, BC Ferries is controlled by government. You know, though, so there are some things in our country that are controlled. In socialist countries, more things are controlled. Banks, for instance, could be controlled by the government, but they're not in Canada. This is a socialist belief. Also very pro-union, and unions like them, very pro-labor, and labor likes them. They love themselves the welfare state, right? They would like taxes increased. You, okay? Because they would want to see higher unemployment rates or higher welfare rates. Does that make sense? So in favor of taxes, in favor of labor. Let's jump over to the other side. Over here we have conservatives. Now, my conservative friends online are saying, he's put you too close to the fascists, you socialist teacher. Well, they could be anywhere over here, okay? And I've said to you, conservatives could be towards the middle or out here, but they are to the right. And conservatives very much are into things like law and order. They want to pass laws that are stricter. They're into minimum sentencing. If you do something wrong, there has to be a minimum sentence. Don't let the judge let you off too easy. Uh, they're into cutting taxes. They like business. They argue that business deserves freedom, and businesses make jobs, private sector, private sector, private sector. So cut taxes, good for business, okay, law and order. Making sense? They also like the word conserve, and conserve means to conserve traditional values. So they were sort of the last to be in favor of same-sex marriage, but they are in favor of it. They move, they just move more slowly. They're not like liberals, they just go back and forth and back and forth. They're, hey, let's, you know. So conservative, a conservative could be painted by a liberal as, oh, you just want um, dad working and, and mom at home taking care of the house. Everything will be wonderful in the 1950s. That's not fair. Conservatives move. Some conservatives think that. Conservatives move, they just move more slowly. They want to preserve traditions. Okay? So conserve traditions. By the way, over here, social, we talked about they're into society. What's good for society? That's the socialist. Communists is what's good for the community, and fascists are just crazy talk. Now, over we go to here, a little bit to the left, we have liberals. And the root word of liberal is liberty. Okay, and the confusing part for us is the Liberal Party of British Columbia is actually quite conservative, so that, that confuses people. But the traditional Liberal Party, sort of the, the federal Liberal Party, they tend to be a little more willing to see changes in um, things like, uh, they'd be, they're in favor right now of legalizing marijuana, and the conservatives aren't. Does that help? Okay, um, liberals came up with the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. That was Trudeau with his Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Um, so, and liberals will be, again, they're not really in favor of taxes. Uh, they tend to be a little bit, but they'll be, uh, how do I say this? They're, they're all over the place right now in Canada. But a liberal is usually in favor of liberty. They're more likely to try to back off on, um, on law and order a little bit. That'd be okay? All right, so here is our chart. If I were you, this tends to be where the provincial government falls down and asks their questions because, again, the liberals can move around in here quite a bit. How'd we do? We good to go? You all right? Political spectrum. Roy G. Biv. Wouldn't, wouldn't science be easier? Okay, um, now, back here. Elections in Canada. Uh, let's talk elections. What do I say about elections? Let's start with uh, the beginning of the process. To start at the very, oh, remember that stupid, uh, the stupid six points on whatever page it was that they're going to ask you. Uh, all right, so an election in Canada starts with dissolution. And that sounds strange, but the governor general is asked by the prime minister to call an election, and the governor general, if he or she says yes, because the governor general represents the queen, when they say yes, parliament dissolves. All the little MPs go out, it doesn't exist, and they have an election. So step one is always called dissolution of parliament, it means it dissolves. 
Oh gosh, what are the other steps? Um, enumeration, is that one of them? And isn't enumeration, that's the uh, one where we uh, make a voters list. Now, the terms they'll ask us around this are Elections Canada, which is the name of the group. Remember we talked about the federal government? The Elections Canada does this, and somebody called the Chief Electoral Officer. And um, his job is to create a voters list and try to make sure people don't cheat. Good luck. People cheat in politics because it matters. Doesn't mean it's right. Uh, after enumeration, we have, was it, called, was it nominations? I think so. I think so. We're going to go with it. In case if I've missed something, apologies. Um, nominations. Nominations are where the political parties pick their candidates. Okay? They pick their candidates. So the liberal, when you get your ballot, it will have a liberal member, a conservative member. Who gets to be the liberal member? That's who was nominated only by the liberal party. Remember that? So the local conservatives pick their own candidate. The local liberals pick their own candidate. The local NDP and the local independents don't because they're independent. There. Uh, then we campaign, which is we go out and say, vote for me. Or we usually say, don't vote for the other guy because he sucks. That tends to work better. We love to hear negative stuff. Uh, following the campaign, we vote, <laughs> which I believe the textbook calls polling. I'm really not sure why, just to make it sound more intellectual. And then finally, we count the ballots, but that sounds too easy to understand, so we call it tabulating. Now, that was, remember that? I said to you, this is the most insane multiple choice question you will ever see. And when you see it, you can go like this, and then get it right. Uh, they'll, they'll say what order this is in, or they'll ask you something about it. What I think is more important about the elections part of the process here is the fact that we have a um, we have a system where we elect MPs and MLAs who are elected in electoral districts. What's another name for an electoral district? A riding. A riding, and I think there's even another one. Isn't that a constituency? They're all the same thing. Remember, I drew Saskatchewan. And I broke Saskatchewan, because I can only draw Saskatchewan. Thank you, ge geography of Saskatchewan. And, and I broke it into boxes, and I said each one is an electoral district or a constituency or a riding. How did they decide where those borders were? Two things they take into account. The population and the size. Okay, so population and size is matters. And remember, each one elects one MP or one MLA. And they send them there. And then we talked about our first past the post system and how it's possible for one riding to elect one person by just, you know, winning by just two votes. And that's why our system can be kind of unfair. Do you remember this or not? Okay, how am I doing? Are we good? Good morning, Emily. Good morning, Megan. They look so happy to be here. Okay.